How's it going boys and girls? Today we are going to be doing something a little bit different because this is the one video I do once a year that is not really reptile related at all. That is because today we are going to be talking about addiction and mental health. I like to do this style of video or just this one video at least once a year because we usually get you know thousands of thousands of new people going and I hope at least some of them can get something out of this video. So that's why we do it. A little bit late this year. Usually I try to do it right on the time, but you know, stuff's been busy, life's been going on, crazy stuff. But um, as of October 11th, your boy is now nine years sober. Absolutely fantastic. So close to that 10 year mark, man. I, I really hope the 2024 year goes the way I, I want it to go. You know, Project 500 and all that crazy stuff. It'd be really cool seeing a successful, a very successful breeding business. YouTube channel's the YouTube channel. I don't expect much out of it anymore after five years of doing it. But the business, I think, is going to be really great in 2024, and it would be really awesome doing that 10-year sobriety video of showing, like, what it was like before to, like, where we are now. We finally made it after all of those struggles. Usually how I do this is I kind of just tell my story, you know, what happened and where I was, the crazy fucking stories that come out of that, that life of, you know, young teenagers to adult Dakota and I think it's a story a lot of people can relate to but at the end of the day I think if you are gonna get something out of it you kind of only get like a relatable story and then here I am today right so today I'm gonna do something a little bit different you guys can go find those videos of me telling my story there's a couple of them at this point today I want to talk about that middle point how I went from getting off the middle and then where I am today, right? I don't think you guys know much about that middle story and how I kind of built things up and built myself up to be where I am today. So let's talk about that story, shall we? At the end of what the usual story is, old Dakota has been living in a Motel 6 for months on end. I've got about a garbage bag filled with all of my belongings and one guitar case with a guitar and that's how I've been living. It was at that point I just decided, you know, I'm about to become 19 years old. This is not the life I want to live. I, I, don't, I don't want to be doing this anymore. So after about a year and a half of not talking to my parents, I gave my mom a call and I let her know that uh, I want to come home. I'm tired of this. And so they did. They let me. I got a plane ticket from them. I left everyone. Now, I didn't tell anybody because they might they might get a little angry that I'm gonna I'm gonna go get out of all this while they're kind of screwed the pooch down in there. So I didn't I didn't tell a soul. Didn't tell the girlfriend at the time. Didn't tell any of the other dudes I was living with. I'm just like yo. I'm gonna I'm gonna go up here for a second. I'll be back. And then I never came back. <laughs> The story starts October 11th, 2014. I got no money to my name. I am thousands of dollars in debt to debt collectors due to eviction notices, electric bills being put into collections, all of that good stuff. My credit score is like a 457 if I'm being nice to myself. Uh, Dakota's, we're down bad right now. We're down bad. I got about a sophomore education level. That still carries to this day. I didn't go back. It's a very, it was a very difficult time. I, I moved 2,000 miles away from anyone I knew at the time. So I'm in a place I've never been to before, where I got no friends, nobody. I got no cash on me. I'm back in my parents' house. No job. No education. I'm feeling pretty low about myself, you know, the, the, the Facebook friends, they're all going to community college, they're going up in their careers and stuff like that, and your boy kind of just started all over, and that was a very tough thing to, uh, to, to bite down on, on being like, well, I'm back at the beginning after all this time. What do I decide to do? First thing, broke, no money, hormones raging, nothing else to do as a 19-year-old kid, I bagged myself a goth girlfriend within 24 hours. God damn, was I good. <laughs> I mean, th this one, this one's gonna be for the boys in the chat. This is gonna be some some pro advice from a, a man that is now 28 years old to my younger, my younger audience. Don't date the goth girlfriend. They'll hurt you, not physically. Um, they'll hurt you here. They'll hurt you right here, man. Stay away. It's not worth. <laughs> So once that started happening, I needed a job. I needed to get money. You need, you need to take these, you need to take girls on dates, right? You can't just be like, yo, you want to chill in my parents' basement? That doesn't go over that well anymore. That, that, that's, not, that's not the flex that it once was when you were 16 or 15, whatever. So your boy gets a job at, who would have guessed it, Hot Topic. 
Topic had a seasonal position and apparently I was perfect for it with absolutely no experience, but I looked emo AF and that's really all you need to do to get a job at Hot Topic. It was at this time during that time and about that summer area where we first got Rex the Bearded Dragon, the very first pet reptile I ever had. I brought this whole thing up, going to the zoo creatures for the first time. We had one of those group ponds to take a tour and I bought myself a Bearded Dragon. Absolutely fantastic. That's what kicked it all off. Thank you, nerd. Hot Topic job, it, it's only seasonal, right? So the summer's over, your boy doesn't have a job anymore. Now where does someone, no education, nothing going on, not really good work ethic, just really a bum in all sense, am I right? And I'm also in New England. Well, you get a job at Dunkin' Donuts. Boys and girls, I was the 4 a.m. shift because they paid 75 cents more. And so I decided to just destroy my sleep cycle and any amount of time having a social life to work 4 a.m. out of Dunkin' Donuts. My God, those were some of the worst days of my life. I had to go to bed at 8 o'clock at night in order to be up at 3.30 in the morning to give people coffee and donuts. I did that for a couple months. I want to say like six months, maybe less. I never really stayed at a job for very long because I just started hating people in that job. And it was at that point, man, I wanted to get back into animals, man. My passion was always with the animals. You know, I've always loved dogs. I really, I wanted to be a dog trainer. That was kind of my thing. The reptiles were cool, but your boy wasn't a reptile addict like I am today. And so it was with that, that I decided, let's go try to find an animal job. I did. There was a doggy daycare, like a little bit down the road, the next town over. And I went in and I interviewed for that position. For those long-term viewers on this channel, you guys will know that's where I met Renee. She was actually my manager at that position. And while most most people in a job interview actually decide to try to do a good job and make a good impression, I decided to hit on her during the interview. Somehow that managed to work out, I'm not too sure how, but I did end up getting the job. That job lasts uh, a little under a year, probably. I don't remember the timeline. God, I cannot go back to a 9 to 5 because my resume is all fucked. <laughs> Which then became, I wasn't making a lot. Animal jobs, they just don't pay you a lot. Especially these like entry level dog, you know, doggy daycare stuff. I think I was making like $8 an hour, eight fifty, something like that. That wasn't a lot of money. Your boy got a car now. He also got some crested geckos. Of course, Almo, my first crested gecko. You know, we got to feed these things. I got to feed myself. I got to pay for a phone, a car. I got bills to pay at this point, man. So I, I need a better paying job. And so I was going to start looking. And then I think the straw that broke the camel's back was my, the goth girlfriend got a job at another doggy place and they paid like ten fifty, And I was like, fuck dude, I want $10 and 50. So I started talking to them a little bit. I interviewed, I got the job because I already had prior experience and I wasn't too sure if I was going to leave. So I did like this doggy daycare. It was a very, it was a very nice job. But then the incident happened. It was my very first dog attack. And you were thinking when you think of dog attack, it was a big Rottweiler, a Doberman, a German Shepherd, scary. Nope, it was a little fucking cattle dog. <laughs> the way this thing was set up is there's the office where the pets come in, the big dog area, and then the small toy dog area, the puppy dog area, right? So you have to bring this little tiny little shit, this little fuzzy shit ball, and bring it into the little dog area, but you have to go through the big dog area. And so what happened was this little fucking cattle dog thing with a high prey drive saw that thing and tried to kill it. And I wasn't gonna let this little fluffy thing off. So I fucking hurtled down, I fucking kneeled down. This thing's fucking tearing my shirt, it's ripping into my back, man. And so I just like sprinted like a lying man into the gate and collapsed. I was like, holy shit, man. It was, a. Uh, it was rough. It was it was very traumatizing being attacked by that little cow. I think I was just tired of it. There was some other personal stuff that I won't really get into, but that was I think I quit on the spot. I was like, I'm I'm done, dude. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm gonna go to the other place and get paid more. The place was worse. Now keep in mind, boys and girls. You know, Dakota well, doesn't know about this yet. We'll get into it later. But I have, I have borderline personality disorder, which makes working any relationship and just life in general extremely difficult for me, and just not very well being uh, playing with others. So jobs just kind of there's a very big correlation between my mental health and me leaving jobs every five seconds. I working at the Barking Dog. I think that's what it was called. It, was somewhere in New Hampshire. Um, so I worked there for a little bit and God, man, not only does that place just suck, it's just a crappy place to bring your dog. Um, it just, 
they just like really didn't like alternative people. I had to be like really conscious, conscious about like my tattoos, which I mean, I think I had like this, these two at the time. And I think I had like just this, no sleeve or anything. None of this shit that's going on. It was just like a couple of tattoos. In the winter time, it wasn't really an issue because I usually wore like long sleeves because it's cold outside. But in the summer, I didn't wear long sleeves. And apparently like customers complained that I had a visible tattoo. And so they kept having me wear like long sleeves when it's like 95 degrees outside. And I kind of told them to get fucked after a while. I'd like wear a long sleeve shirt one day and I'd take it off and they'd yell at me, blah, blah, blah. And I think at one point I wore, um, I, my ears have always been this big for a very long time. I think I wore like skull plugs and I got written up for that, which really just like ticked me off. Um, so I kind of just left. It was really rainy that day. It was shitty. I felt angry. And so I just kind of like put my walkie talkie down in the left big theme and any poor poor employer that decided to employ you know, I, I forgot to mention when i did get the when i got hired for the uh the first doggy daycare position i think i just never told the other people i was gonna quit and so they called me at like 4 15 in the morning and i'm like hello they're like hey dakota you coming in i'm like no i'm never gonna come in again goodbye and that's kind of how I just ended all my employment. I don't know why people kept hiring me. <laughs> I am once again without a job. I, I can't hold down a job and I, I don't know, man. It's just, it's, it's rough out there for old Dakota. So I ended up going to Petco. Obviously I had reptile experience and I had dog experience. So I can get into some of these big chain stores now. So we're getting doggy daycare. I'll be, you can love dogs all you want, man. Trust me, don't go to a doggy daycare. They're the people, you got to keep this in mind. There's something I never, I never put myself in in those shoes and like what that mindset was. What dogs are going to a doggy daycare? Some of them are just people that want their dog to have a good time. Most of them, I would say the majority of the people bring their dogs to doggy daycare because they can't leave them in the house because they are just such a nuisance. And so they bring that nuisance to you and then you have to deal with it for 12 hours. Not a good time. I ended up getting, I, I got interviewed at um, Petco. For some reason they ran a background check on me and it took like eight weeks to do. So I didn't have a job for a couple months, which was a little bit stressful. Anyway, I get the job at Petco. I, they interview me and they're like, well, sir, we're, we're not looking for any reptile guys or dog guys. How are you with fish? I didn't lie. I told them. I said I owned a beta fish when I was 13. They're like, that counts as experience. You're hired. And they hired me as their fish specialist. I owned a betta fish 10 years ago at that point, and it died. Don't take advice from Petco folks. <laughs> Petco a little bit and they start offering a position for a dog trainer. They do a six week course and you get a certification and you get to be a dog trainer. And so I did that. Uh, I completed my six weeks so I was a certified dog trainer. And right before I took started taking on my first clients as it, because let's, they spent like, I, I don't know, there's like a certain amount of money they spend on you to do this type of thing. It was, it was like, a, I don't know, a couple grand or something like that. They spent that on me. <laughs> as soon as I finished it, this local pet store that I actually really like, it was like in my tier list, there was Nerd and then there was this pet store. I really liked that pet store. They ended up giving me a call because I wanted, I think like a female or a male Chinese water dragon or a mountain horn dragon, it was something. The guy calls me and he's like, hey, we can get this in. And I was like, cool. And he's like, wait, didn't you put in an application with us? And I was like, yeah, man. He's like, you want a job? I'm like, oh, sure. And so I get a job over there. Uh, immediately quit the pet job. <laughs> they like said a bunch of times, they're like, you know, you really got to stay with this because we're doing all this stuff. Where I was like, don't worry, you can count on me. Turns out they didn't do any back, they didn't do any research on Old Dakota and his prior employment list because if there's one thing you can keep for sure as an employer, you cannot count on Dakota. That's just something that's not going to happen. Somewhere along this point that Old Dakota actually started getting into breeding crested geckos. This was years and years ago. I really did not know this wasn't breeding as a business. I wouldn't even classify it as breeding as a hobby. I was doing such low pathetic numbers for breeding crested geckos. But it was the first time like I got that thought in my head that I was like, you know what? I'm going to try breeding these guys. And I did it for a little bit. This is the longest job I've ever had at this point. Uh, I worked at this pet store for like 
two years or something. I think at the end I was only making like $10.25 an hour. It was god awful. But eventually I got put into the, I was a bird specialist at that point. So I was taking care of the aviary section, taking care of the breeders that they had and the pets. Usually we shipped in a lot of our pets with some of the smaller stuff, you know, the finches, canaries, cockatiels, lovebirds. Uh, we had some rare stuff as well, like rose-breasted cockatoos, um, a couple of other ones I can't remember. But I was kind of in charge of all of that and then hand raising all the babies that came in. That really included anything from as small as like a little, uh, uh, what are those, little, a parakeet, one of those small little budgies, all the way up to at the end I was hand raising hyacinth macaws. And for those of you guys that aren't in the bird world, hyacinth macaws are one of the rarest macaws and rarest birds out there that you can get. They cost about $25,000 <laughs> and they chose this guy to hand raise and get that bird going. It was honestly the best time of my life, I would say. I, I don't even know... <sighs> I didn't have a lot of money, but I don't have a lot of money now, but I don't have to work with any. I'm trying to figure out was is now better or is before better? I think when hindsight's 2020, you always think the past is better than what it is today, but yeah, I'd probably say now is better because I didn't work for anybody. I didn't take orders from anybody. It was a real chill job though. I absolutely loved my job. It was a very fun time. Of course, having BPD, I found ways in paranoia to make it not a fun time, and I was eventually fired. To call it, you know, here's what I, I bring it to. You know when, like, I call it the six-month reptile expert on the Facebook groups? You know when you, like, kept a bearded dragon or a gecko for, like, six months and you think you know everything? Yeah, that was me at that job. I thought I knew everything, and everything they were doing were wrong, and so I just kind of, like... I just pissed everyone off because I was a little shit. All those six month reptile, they're all little shits. I was the same way. They got tired of me after a while. And so eventually I ended up getting fired from that job. That was like one of very few jobs I actually got fired from. I don't get fired very often. I, I, I think I quit before they're able to fire me. <laughs> so there I lie once again, still living in my, in my parents' basement, no job again. Uh, girlfriend, we ended up breaking up. I'm, uh, old Dakota's on a low. We're back, we're back where we started. We were. We started there, we went up, and now we're back where we started. Um, I ended up getting a job as a veterinary technician. New Hampshire, they don't require any college education or anything like that. So I was a vet tech. I kind of forgot about that job. Being a vet tech is one thing. It does definitely take some mental toll. You know, you, you see you see a lot of dark shit as a vet tech. And while, yes, it was a band field, people love to talk shit. I did vet stuff. We did surgeries. I assisted in the surgeries doing the shit vet techs do. I was a real vet tech. <laughs> Not only is there a lot of stress with that, with like stuff that comes in, there's a lot of shit that goes into that. But um, also being the only man there. I was the only, only male. A lot of females, a lot of, lot of, lot of women, a lot of girls. Um, very catty. It was very, very passive aggressive cattiness. And man, that just wears on me very quickly. And so I grew to despise each and every one of them very soon. I was kind of the outcast because I was the only dude there. Um, it wasn't a fun experience for me. I, I, I'm glad I got the, the experience of becoming a vet tech, learning a little bit more about medicine, this and that, what goes into some of these things. Uh, the biggest thing I learned is vet techs don't really know shit. I mean, they do know stuff, but 90% of the time they got this giant fucking book in the back and they just look it up. Yeah, you know when vets go to the back, that's what they're doing. They're looking at a book to see what's wrong with your dog. Turns out Google isn't. <laughs> now here's the point where life changes. And I, I, I can't talk too, too much about it, but I think I can give some little stuff away. We just can't get into the nitty gritty, the details of what happened back then. When you sum it up, Old Dakota got offered a position to be a co-founder for a new grow project. Uh, marijuana was just legal in Maine, or it's been legal for a little bit, and the opportunities to start making some big cash were in. I don't know how to grow plants. I was, I was not a horticulturist. I just smoked bud. I used to. I don't, I don't do it anymore. I don't, I don't count bud. Well, I guess we should clear this up. Bud isn't a drug. It, it don't count. I was doing the hard stuff. Bud ain't a drug. Basically, to sum it all up, 
and you guys, this is kind of where DBC BX started was that trailer, right? The, the contract was I get a move in with the trailer with my um, girlfriend at the time, Renee, that a lot of you guys know about if you've been a fan of the channel for a uh, any amount of a long amount of time, I guess. I got to live in that trailer for free. I got to set my own hours, just be my own dude. I was the dude that took care of all the plants, horticulture, any of that. I was the uh, caregiver, so I had to get licensed and everything, and I got paid a thousand dollars a month plus um royalties on whatever the final income whatever that yearly income was at the end we all i got a percentage of that as well very good gig did not take it seriously to be fair i was like 22 at the time i think i the i don't remember these dates the timeline's fucking fuzzy i was probably in my young 20s at the time <laughs> you know any young 20 year old that takes this shit actually seriously I don't because I wasn't. And so that that project ended up flopping. I grew bud for about two or three years and um, it just failed. The cost, everyone wants to grow marijuana and everyone wants to do it like, like a commercial rate. I did it at a commercial rate. The overhead expenses on that thing are gigantic. It was huge, man. I think even our electricity was like four grand a month. Uh, it ran us out. We had a really bad crop. We had a bad veg cycle after bad veg cycle. One got mold and then the second veg cycle got mites. And so going that long without a flower and any product to sell it destroyed the business uh we went bankrupt and so i got the call it was like hey man uh we're closing down shop we're not doing this anymore and i was like well shit man i haven't worked for like a year or two that's gonna be a pretty big gap on my resume and i'm like what about me living here and they're like well we'll figure that out when we figure it out and then I squatted there for like seven more years. <laughs> the gist was I live there until I find something better and then get out of there and then they take it over. And it was just kind of like cut clean after that. Um, so then I had to go find another job. <laughs> when the worst idea ever popped into my head. You see, Renee worked at the post office and they pay you a lot of money to work at the post office. I'm talking, it's like a job. It's a grown up job. I'm not working at no Petco for 1025. I think you start out at like 19 an hour, 401k, Roth IRA, a benefits package. That was a big boy job. And I didn't really care about any of that. I just saw $19 an hour. At this point, it was the dawn of what used to be DBCB Exotics, which is now Dakota Blue exotics i figured out man well if I, I got all this free time now like yeah i gotta get a job to pay these bills electric oil heating car phone all of that good stuff you know that, that ain't gonna go for nothing but i, I want to start making some side income i'm gonna start going back into breeding crested geckos i think i stopped for like uh two years i want to say something like that i started for a little bit stopped and then in 2019 is when i started i said i want to actually do this the right way so that's when the facebook page the instagram was all brought up and that was the dawn of the reptile breeding business a couple months after that the youtube channel was born and now you can go all the way back down 600 videos and see where it all started going all the way up at that point i was working at the post office don't work at the post office boys and girls it is the absolute worst worst thing you could ever do for yourself the mental strain the mail and the amazon packages and during christmas uh, right now i would be out i mean there were days i worked 40 50 days in a row no fucking fruit flies no breaks no time off literally from like right after thanksgiving to like well into january um there were it was just straight on working it was awful man <laughs> you're working 7 a.m to like 9 p.m at night and then you gotta do it again and again and again and again osha doesn't care osha the post osha don't got shit on the post office the post office can do whatever the fuck it wants i don't know how it's physically possible but they don't do anything to you they can work you just like that and it was just <laughs> the mental agony and strain that it puts on you yeah, that was rough. Funny enough, the post office job was actually the longest job I ever worked. I worked at the post office for like four years or something. A little bit as, you know, the full-time dude. And then at one point, I want to say it was at the very end of 2019. And that's when I was like, it was the Christmas. I was like, I can't fucking do this, man. I, I cannot do this anymore. This is ridiculous. 
I'm out of here. So I ended up getting another job now that we're like way up. We used to be in New Hampshire and now we're way up and now I go back. There's a place, uh, I'm like right on the line of New Hampshire. So I go back to New Hampshire. Um, I get a job at another doggy daycare. I don't know why I decided that was a fucking good idea, but I decided I want to go back into animals after doing the bud thing for a little bit. Uh, I haven't really worked with animals for quite a few years now, except my personal collection. So I thought I'd get back into that, maybe try to find some more vet tech, um, anything of that nature. It was, it was kind of at this point where I didn't really think anything was coming, you know? So I just kind of like, I kept my head down, kept doing a little breeding stuff on the side, the YouTube stuff on the side. And then I started working at a, uh, a doggy daycare once again. Once again, the only guy there, I, I swear to God, if, I, I don't know if, I, maybe this is just my personal experience. Maybe this is just because I got borderline. I don't know what the fuck it is, but let me know, let me know in, in the comments. If you're a dude that only, that was the only dude at your workplace, is it as awful as an experience as mine was? Because mine has always been like, just a really bad experience. So I do that for a little bit. It's just fucking awful. Uh, again, I'm just like this big outcast. Um, I started really, getting into YouTube and I kind of just wanted to focus on YouTube. I really didn't give a shit about this job. So most of my time I was like on my phone answering comments, talking to other YouTubers, just not really caring about the job I had. So they didn't like me, I didn't like them. It was, it was, it was a mutual hatred of each other, I guess. Then the moment finally came, April or somewhere, 2020. We all know that year very, very well, the year of COVID. Now, when this stuff first came out, your boy was very wrong. I was like, this is another Ebola scare where like three people get it and nothing's gonna come of it. These guys are just, this is, this is propaganda. Nothing's gonna happen with this thing. Boy, was I very wrong. I didn't really want to work, and so at that point, I pretended I had COVID to get out of work because at that point, you could take like a week off and so I did that and I got off work like all, all the other scumbags that like pretended to be sick to get off get that week off and so I did that I was still working at the post office the post office was on Sunday and this job was like four days a week working 13 hour shifts or something like that then the day finally came the big shutdown if you were not a needed employee a required employee you were shut down. Doggy daycares were not a required place of employment. And so they shut down and at first, I don't wanna get into that. <laughs> first the lady, they laid me off. She laid me off through a text message which I thought was kinda of shitty, but whatever bros. Um, they didn't send my last paycheck for quite a while and so I started getting a little pissed off with them and I'm like, yo, where's my cash? Like, I need my money. And she goes, she was, it was something like, listen, a little professionalism would be nice. I'm like, bitch, you fired me through a text message. What are you talking about professionalism? I got on it a little bit. Old Dakota went off a little bit. Shit got crazy. They ended up sending me a letter in the mail that said I was banned from, um, I was banned from that location and I, I didn't get laid off. I got fired for gross negligence and abusing animals. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy stuff. I found out, I missed some context. I always miss some context when I make these videos because we're talking like such a long span of time. Uh, I was a dog walker for a little bit of time. I think before I did the post office, I was doing the dog walking thing. Uh, it was a very sketchy, like, scam-like thing where they were withholding money for me. They was doing some sneaky tax stuff that I wasn't kosher. The reason why the doggy daycare thing hated me so much is because that woman, the owner of that shop, was friends with the dog walking chick. And I went off on that chick for really just stealing money from me. Another wild story, um, they ended up calling, they, these people were so convinced that I had a key to one of the dog's place or a cat's place or something, it was like an animal, I was like, I don't have a fucking key, dude, what are you talking about? They end up calling the police on me, and they get the cops over here because I'm like withholding this key, I don't have a fucking key, man, and so I was like, well, sir, you know, if we don't, we're gonna have to charge you, I was like, yo, charge me, charge me right now, bro, old Dakota's about to get a quick fucking bag from this, uh, they didn't charge me, unfortunately. Your boy did not secure the bag at that point. Man, I really would have if, uh, if that was the case.
a little bit of a rewind. Let's get back fast forward. Um, so they ended up firing me for that bullshit. And I got so fucking heated because I know what they were trying to do at that point. They were trying to get me to where I could never work at another animal place again. Like they were just trying, they were blacklisting me essentially. And so I just thought to myself, man, well, if these bitches are going to try to blacklist me from ever working a job, I'm going to make my own job. And that's when I decided to go full time into DBCB Exotics. Was I ready? Absolutely not. Did I have the quantity of breeders to make up for it? Absolutely not. Did I have a very large social media following? Absolutely not. None of those things. I was making a little bit of cash on YouTube and I was selling a little bit amount of animals. But God damn it, I was so fucking tired, bros, of working these minuscule jobs from idiot managers that didn't know shit telling me what to do. I couldn't fucking take it anymore. So I decided I'm going to just grind and I'm going to keep grinding. I'm going to keep my head down. I'm going to grind this shit until I can make it into something. And here we are today. <laughs> That's when you really look around. It's, it's not the, it's not where, God, fucking fungus gnats, man. God, when you it's when you really look around it's not it's not the, the oh my i guess when you really look around it's not the lap of luxury that you uh yeah you, know, you once have thought and i, I didn't i didn't I, I thought we'd be a little bit further um than where we are i kind of made some mistakes along the way i've talked about it every now and then uh hopefully we're, we're we've kind of definitely from last year onwards of 2023 onwards we've definitely been making some good business decisions to keep this thing afloat and really steer it into the right direction of being a successful business uh, thinking more of a brain and business mentality instead of a heart passion mentality, I think was the thing that was really holding this thing back and we're really on the right track at this point. 28,000 subscribers, that's not that's not nothing to like scoff at. I think that's a pretty good accomplishment. You gotta think, it's not the YouTube world you gotta think of, it's the reptile YouTube world. They're two way completely different things. While other people do this for like a year or two and then amass 100,000 subscribers, that's just not what happens on YouTube. You, unless you're Adam Wickens. <laughs> if you're Adam Wickens, it works. But I mean, fuck, man. I, I just, I don't have, I don't have what that guy has in order to do that. And so 28,000, I'll take 28,000. It's good. Something I found that really, you know, puts me in a right mindset. Also, though, like a lot of other people have bigger subscriber numbers, like 60, 80, 120, whatever that number is. Um, we kind of have the same view count. Like they have like triple my subscribers, but they're only doing like six to eight K views. And some of them are actually doing only like one to two. And I'm doing like one to three per video. So, you know, I don't really like think about the subscriber, the big number right up there anymore. I think about like everyone, although it's a slow rate of growth, everyone that does subscribe seems to like your boy, right? And they like coming back to those videos. And I kind of think that's a little bit more, I think it's a nicer thing, building a better community, a more tight niche community um, than just having a really big number up there, if that makes sense. That's how old Dakota grinded his way from being a 19 year old kid with no money, bad credit, and a lot of money in debt to now the man you see today. It's a $75,000 reptile collection, thousands of dollars in debt and bad credit still. This was not the inspiring story that I thought it was going to be. <laughs> We're just messing around. We do all right. This year is rough. We, 2023 is rough because 2020 happened, and now this year the con this is the consequence year of everything that went on that way. I made a hell of a lot of money in 2020. Now I make no money. Now it's fine. It's a, it's an up and down cycle. 2024. Fuck, man, I hope 2024 is good. We're going to make 500 babies. I hope I can move them. But, uh, you know, we got the tight niche community. Now's the time to prove your loyalty. And buy <laughs> it was the point of this video. I don't really remember, but I can tell you two things right now. This goes for two separate people, or maybe you're like myself, and it hits both things at home. Uh, number one, I remember when I first got clean and I first started getting my life together. Like I said, you started back at zero, living in your mom's, your mom and dad's basement, no money to your name, nothing. And it's that point when you are, you know, using and doing all that stuff, um, you don't really think about the future. You don't, I mean, there were days I thought I was gonna, you know, 
the next day. I didn't really care about living. I didn't care about what happened next. And it was that point when it kind of so happened that I was going to live another day and keep doing those days where I kind of felt lost, right? You, you don't know you don't know what to do next because for those years that you were doing it, you didn't have to think about what, what, what happens next. You were just kind of doing the same thing over and over. Number one, I wanted to show this video for those guys to kind of prove a point a little bit. And so although you do feel that way because I was right there in that direction, I was in the same situation as you, I just kept doing shit and I just kept on doing it and going and working. I won't say like, I'm not gonna say like, put your bootstraps on and work hard and you'll make it. No, a lot of it was networking and just finding a better position each and every time. I always consider myself very lucky in that sense. Um, if for some reason, I just truly believe I am a god. I cannot die and good things will just happen to me and just land on my lap because by God, they always do it. So I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I don't know, man. Shit just kept happening. Kept I kept finding better and better jobs without doing much, and I don't know why that happened. But if you, you you'll never know if you have luck like Dakota, unless you don't try. So remember, while I've got all this amazing you know, vet technician, hand raising twenty five thousand dollar birds, all that stuff, old Dakota started out working at a Hot Topic and the fucking graveyard shift at Dunkin' Donuts. That's how I started making my mark. Started with one bearded dragon, waking up at 3.30 in the morning to go make donuts for a living. The point I wanna make is to my borderline folks out there, people that also suffer from BPD um, like myself, uh, I fucking hate the stigma of BPD, man. I can't stand it. You Google, if you Google, depression, anxiety, the first thing that's come up is how to help the person with that mental illness, right? How to, how to get better, some coping stuff, where to go to, all of that good stuff. You Google borderline personality disorder and you get how to live with someone with borderline, how to be in a relationship and a friendship with someone with borderline, how, how you're the victim for being a part of someone with BPD and that shit just... Oh, that pisses me off so much, man. It's we're so villainized and demonized to the point that like people with BPD are just awful, horrific monsters that should not be in relationships, should not have friendships. We should just be fucking coursed in the shadows for the awful people we are. And I hate that, man. And I don't do it as much anymore, but I used to research a lot about it when I first got my proper diagnosis. That was a thing that happened. I did the whole test blah, blah, blah. The guy laughed at me. He's like, you don't have borderline. And then I took the test and he's like, oh shit, man, you got borderline. I'm like, cool. I didn't know what BPD was or any of that stuff. I never researched it. I researched it for a long time. I got really pissed off at the results I was finding. Everything that goes into that. Um, I know there's like DPT, DBT therapy and shit like that, but I just... I'm never going to tell anyone not to do something, you know, if I'm put into, I've made a position in my life where I don't have to, for people that don't know what DPD, DP, DB, fuck, DBT is, you're basically, it's basically changing your personality on how to be better suited for society. So you have to like change who you are to be good in society and that shit, I just don't jive with that, man. And I'm not gonna say, you know, if I, I'm put, I put myself and I'm in now in a position where I don't have to do that. I can be fucking, you know, crazy and nuts and don't really matter, man. Cause I make YouTube videos and I go to FedEx and ship geckos out. I don't really, I'm not putting that like work nine to five life. And so for the people that, you know, aren't, don't have that and they have to, then yeah, man, do DBT if you think you need it. Personally for me, I can't stand it. Never even tried. It has like a 90% failure rate because a lot of people have the same mindset as I have when you have this thing. And we just think we're better than everyone while also hating ourselves with a burning passion. It is the weirdest fucking thing to think you're God and a piece of shit at the very same time. At the end of the day, what I want to say to all those people is you're not the fucking piece of shit, awful person that I guess, I don't know, society, Google makes you out to be when you try learning about this diagnosis. Build something. Prove everyone wrong. What I tell you, boys and girls, I live most of my life out of spite for everyone. All those pieces of shit that thought I was just going to end up in a ditch somewhere and not do anything with my life. Look at me now. I run my own business full time, all day, every day. I make YouTube videos and breed geckos for a living while everyone's working at Subway without a driver's license. 
Spite fuels me to do everything I do and let spite fuel you to be a great success for yourself just to prove everyone else wrong. Good advice? I don't know, dude. I'm not a therapist or a psychiatrist. I'm just some mentally ill dude. What I can tell you and what I've always brought into my life is no one, I swear to God, not one person is ever going to tell me how to live my life and how to do my shit, how I need to be in order to function here and there. I'm going to do this shit even in what I have been doing. Even if I got to do it with my own bare fucking hands, I will build a successful life and a successful business of myself just to prove everyone else wrong. That I need, need, need to change how what was wired up here. I didn't need to change the way I compose myself and live my life. I did that shit my own way and I made something out of it. That is what gets me out of bed every day and continue doing what I do. Thank you so much for another long rambling, watching a long rambling of this. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I hope this a little more perspective into the old life of old Dakota, right? You only got to see the fun shenanigans I got up to. Well, <laughs> God, I, how am I still alive? That is the that is the biggest question I ask myself. And I kind of got into the after part, you know, kind of more a little more. There's still shenanigans and crazy stuff that happened, but a little bit more boring. But kind of like that grind to how I got to where I am today. Some people can take some of this stuff. Maybe you, maybe you're at that point where I was when I was 19 years old, and you're just you're trying to get off. You're trying to chill. You just got this diagnosis, and you don't really know what to do. Hopefully, this is a little little beacon of light, a little hope to see that you don't got to stick with the status quo, man. You don't you don't got to stay in the box. Build your own fucking box, and tell those other box people to screw off. I'm going to make that into a merch. All right, boys. Thank you guys so much for once again watching another video. We'll go back to the Gecko content. Uh, Vlogmas is upon us, so expect daily content from here on out. It's going to be a rough December as always. Thank you guys so much. Until next time, goodbye.